Okay, so the all new Samsung Galaxy Tab A8, one month later review. I wanna go ahead and give you an update on this guy here. Let's go ahead and jump in. All right, so I've owned this guy here for a little bit over a month. And if you remember, I was out for well over three weeks when I went overseas, I went with this tablet and I got to really use this, you know, every day along with my other tablet. And I got to know this guy very, very well. Now you can already see the design change as I've talked about already a number of times. And I believe in my full review, I talked about it, the more boxy shape, you know, it's boxier than what you had on the A7. And I like that, right? It gives it some personality. The main camera is now round. You have these pretty sharp edges. And of course the same, usual suspect power button realm rocker and all that good stuff so far it's been holding up very very well in terms of just user experience nothing really crazy that i can tell you that happened i already told you that besides just the physical changes right beside the design change that you do have here a lot of what is included is going to be similar to what was included on galaxy type a7 already. Sure, you do have a slightly larger display on this guy here at 10.5 inches. It's still a TFT display. 10.5, as I mentioned, the resolution here is 1200 by 1920. So if you were to calculate that a slightly larger display, as opposed to what you had here with a resolution of 1200 by 2000, with a 10.4 inches display. So a slightly smaller tablet, a slightly smaller tablet and a slightly smaller display on the A7. So in terms of PPI, a little bit more dense on the A7 as opposed to what you have on the Galaxy Tab A8 here. But the problem here is that you don't really see a difference when you put them side by side. There is literally no difference. Although again, as I mentioned last time, this one just seems to be slightly on the cooler side. So if this is, you know, that's the type of thing that float your boat, then you probably like that, you know, slightly on the cooler side as opposed to the A7, which is a little bit on the warmer side. But other than that, the display is still beautiful. You can watch things here, you know, full HD. I've enjoyed watching movies on here. No issues there. It's pretty portable. It feels dense. Like I said, already it feels dense. It feels solid also. It feels like if you drop it, it won't just automatically smash. Now, I'm not saying go ahead and do that, but I'm saying that it feels solid. It has some hints of, you know, premium build to it, you know, some premium material here and sticking with the same display. As I mentioned, watching movies on here, you know, it's still beautiful because you can watch things here on full HD TFT display, like I already said, but it's a TFT display made by Samsung, right? And Samsung is known for making great displays, even if it's a TFT display. Now playing games here, again, still staying with entertainment. Playing games here has been pretty good. Of course, course, this particular tablet actually allows you to up the settings in some games like PUBG Mobile as opposed to what you had on the Galaxy Tab A7 here. So when it comes down to gaming, if you were trying to buy a tablet between the A7 and the A8, and let's say you're going to be doing a lot of gaming, just go ahead and grab the A8 because the Unisoc Tiger T618 actually is slightly better than the Snapdragon 610 found on the Galaxy Tab A7. So yes, to those who didn't know, the chipset in the Galaxy Tab A8 is a Unisoc sock chipset tiger 618 and it's not bad at all my unit here of course is the base 32 gigs of internal storage with 3 gigs of ram you can go for the 64 or the 128 gigs with 4 gigs of ram and i do believe there's also a possibility to get a 32 gigs with 4 gigs of ram don't quote me on that but it seems like there is one that way now the micro sd card slot that was one of the things that people were worried about you will be able to expand the storage without any issues with that micro sd using the micro sd card on here you be able to move your apps without any problem. So that was definitely good. Also going back to still the physical attributes of this tablet here, four speakers, right? So you have a quad speaker set up here, which by the way, get pretty loud. I really like these speakers because they actually do get loud despite being on the budget tablet. Sure, the sound is not as crisp as you would like, you know, as you would find on the you know, iPad Pro or Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 or Tab S8, but it does get pretty loud. You also do have a headphone jack in case you want to just go ahead and plug in some headphones in order to really go dive deep 
in your game or your movie or whatever you're doing on your tablet, you could go ahead and do just that. In terms of performance, I didn't notice anything that was just so greatly different than what you would find on the Galaxy Tab A7. Uh, in term, you know, it is a budget tablet, right? So you don't expect to go ahead and just pour in high productivity level of work and expect this guy to be able to handle. You'll be able to do some light to moderate level of work without expecting, you know, to compromise the performance of this guy. But once you start pushing even harder, obviously the guy will crash. I did encounter one crash, only one crash that whole month. That was because I was just playing around with it and just trying to see how much load I could have here. First froze and then it crashed. So it is not, it is, it's a budget tablet, but even if you student, you can use this, you know, to watch your courses online and maybe even take down some notes. Now it does not support the Samsung S Pen, but it will work with a capacitive pencil, you know, meaning you'll be able to take down notes, features, options, all of that extra stuff will be extremely limited when you pick up just a third party capacitive pencil that you'll be able to use on this guy here. But if you wanted to take down notes, you can do that. If you're disciplined enough, you'll be able to take down your notes with that. Now, if you are looking for a cheaper alternative, you know, for notes specifically, obviously you want to consider Galaxy Tab S6 Lite, which if you've been watching the channel for a while, then you knew that I was going to say that. Now, in terms of the battery, the battery has been decent, right? all day battery, depending on your usage. I always say it, don't rely on people who tell you this is exactly how long it's gonna last because they don't know your usage. They don't know how well you're gonna, or how you're gonna be using the tablet. When I was overseas, obviously I was making a lot of calls back home here, you know, with my wife seeing the kids and all that good stuff. And every now and then I actually use this for Zoom calls. And you know, picture quality, obviously compared to what you have on the phone, it's not comparable, right? But you can still, you know, make calls, video calls on this, you know, family and friends, as long as the setting is well lit, you should be fine. So, so far the past months, you know, it's been decent. It's It's been pretty good. I wasn't expecting anything amazing out of a budget tablet, right? Because I also had my Galaxy Tab S7 with me. So in fact, there was a contrast, right? So if I was using my Galaxy Tab S7 all day, and all of a sudden, when I get to my room, I start using this guy here, I would notice that difference. But again, if you are in a market for a budget tablet, if you are able to pick this guy up, don't expect it to be top tier tablet, right? It's definitely a very well built tablet, you know, decent performance uh, at a decent price, I would say. But if you even want to go for more value, look to see if you can grab a Galaxy Tab A7, right? It will offer you a lot more value than this guy would, right? At maybe not half the price. I think you can find them. The, the best deal that I've seen was $150 for the A7 versus $230 for this new guy here. But of course, anytime you buy something like this or anytime you consider buying either one of these two, you have to consider the fact that this guy here is a newer tablet, right? So it's going to be supported longer, obviously, compared to what the Galaxy Tab A7 has to offer in terms of support. But anyway, those were just a few things I wanted to highlight here in terms of updates as far as what it has been like using Galaxy Tab A7 while overseas along with my other tablets. So there you go. If you have any questions, things that you would like for me to test, things that you would like for me to comment on, please let me know in the comment section. I will catch you in the comment section like I always do. I'm also going to catch you in the next video, of course, as always. Up until that next video, stay safe out there.